Okay, we're now live. Sometimes I wonder if I uh, just simply am what you, I'm just staring, but what happens is, hello everybody, first of all, when you're doing uh, Facebook Live, you put in the title of the talk, and then you say go live, and then you're watching for the thing to say live. It comes up a little red thing on the camera, but it's not really live, and I don't want to be talking when it's getting ready. Sometimes it kind of spins and it gets ready. But we're all here. I hope everybody is doing well. It's August 8th. I think it's a bit cooler many places on the East Coast because it's raining cats and dogs. And I think we're getting that storm that came up from Florida. And for those people who are in the way of the storm, I hope you're not having any flooding. It's always an issue. It's either too hot or it's too wet. It's either too windy or it's not windy enough or it's too dry or too wet. Everything is extremes, right? There's no, uh, this kind of enough rain, enough heat, enough everything. Enough is just not the term. This moderation has kind of given way to extremes, but that's a topic for another day. Today's topic is CT scanning of the stomach. So the first thing I want to say is CT is really good for evaluating gastric pathology. But if I only could tell you one thing, I would tell you that it's totally dependent on protocol. We tell our techs, and we have terrific techs, and we tell them over and over, the stomach needs to be distended. The only way to do that is to give contrast. Sometimes we do positive contrast, particularly when there's no IV contrast around. But typically we'll use water. Patients can tolerate drinking water very nicely. The ideal thing is when the patient's about to get on the table, give them 250 to 500 cc's of water extra. So you typically want to give 750 to 1,000 cc's, fill up the stomach, proximal bowel, and you don't need to wait long. Once the stomach is distended, all of those pseudotumors, you know, is there something in the fundus, antrum, all that disappears. Um, I know often the residents say the stomach looks normal, but when it's not distended, it doesn't look normal. It, it, probably it is normal, but it doesn't look normal. And, or they say it looks like maybe gastritis, but now you're overcalling things. Maybe the patient's gonna get worked up for gastritis when it's simply lack of gastric distension. And particularly this time of year, the two areas I see worse are the stomach and the bladder. We know the bladder, if you compress the bladder or it's decompressed, there's no urine in the bladder, it always looks quote unquote thick. If it's only a little bit of urine, it does look thick. And then you end up with a report saying the bladder looks thick. Maybe it's under the stanchion, but if clinically warranted, uh, do a urinalysis, look and make sure the patient doesn't have an infection. When the bladder is distended, life is easy. Either there's a lesion there, it's thickened, or it's not thickened. But this overcalling becomes very, very expensive because either people begin to ignore what you say, and then when you say something finally correct, they'll miss it, or they start working people up, getting lab tests and doing all sorts of things that are not necessary. And maybe all of a sudden now they're looking at the stomach where they should be looking at the bowel or the kidneys or something else. So it can be distracting. Distend the stomach. When the stomach's distended, it's easy to see gastritis. It's easy to see GI bleeding. We talk about the density of the fluid in the stomach. If it's high density, you gotta think about blood. You can be confused by something the patient ate or medication, particularly things like Maalox. But typically it's not gonna be a problem. And then CT, we've spoken about that in some of the talks, is really good for um, looking at GI bleeding. Although we talk about endoscopy as a study of choice for upper GI bleeding, we learned particularly in the COVID era when patients can't get endoscopy, CT works very nicely. When we look for GI bleeding, we scan from the diaphragm down to the symphysis. So whether it's bleeding in the stomach, small bowel, or colon, we're gonna see wherever it comes from. Usually it's not two sites, but it can be, so we're gonna look for everything and be indeed very, very careful. In looking at the stomach, we look at wall thickening. Typically when distended, the stomach is about five millimeters in thickness. The area where it's thickest would be in the antrum. Perry Pickard wrote an article years ago talking about the antrum could be about 12 millimeters, but it's usually because the antrum's a bit thicker and the way you catch the antrum but if there's a tumor present or inflammation, it's gonna be asymmetric uh, when you look at the antrum this way, right? But when it's just normal, it's gonna be nice and symmetric. 
things we look for, we look at wall thickening. Is there a mass present? Is there ulceration present? Is there perforation present? Go to CTSS, look at the teaching file, you see all sorts of cases from tumors to infection to inflammation to ulceration. So you wanna be very careful. Axial works really nicely, but I do look at the coronals and the sagittals. Coronals are great for knowing lesser curvature, greater curvature, going in and out, looking at the posterior wall, as well as interior wall of the stomach, looking for ulcerations. We also look with IV contrast, and so patients with cirrhosis, you'll see varices, EG junction, gastric fundus. You may also see sites of bleeding. Active bleed, as we mentioned, ulceration, tumor, all can be seen. We talk about tumor. Uh, wall thickening over sonometer, you're typically thinking about tumor, perhaps a um, adenocarcinoma. When you have a large exophytic mass, we then think about just tumors, though it just can be exophytic or intraluminal or a combination of both. But just tumors are typically large, over five centimeters. They can be vascular, they may not be vascular, they can have ulcerations, they can have fistulas, they can have air pockets within them. We talk about lymphoma. The lymphoma is usually bulkier, diffuse infiltration of the stomach. Uh, when you have lymphoma, you often have other organs involved. You have lots of adenopathy. Adenocarcinoma, you can have adenopathy as well. Um, when things are greater than five uh, centimeters thick, then you're saying, okay, lymphoma. But we pick up things early these days, and so the original uh, definitions of what was lymphoma versus adenocarcinoma kind of changes because we're not picking up 10 centimeter masses like we used to in the past, we're picking up these smaller lesions. So that becomes an important thing to think about as well. When you're staging the stomach, you wanna look very carefully at the liver, that's where common areas are. You also wanna look at the uh, omentum and mesentery. You can get carcinomatosis from um, gastric cancer. We also can get mets to the stomach. We showed a case at conference yesterday of a renal cell with a vascular meth at the stomach. We've seen Krukenberg tumors, which metastasize to the stomach, bulky ovarian lesions, very, very classic. We talk about all sorts of other tumors in the stomach. We talk about linitis plastica, which is metastatic breast cancer. We talk typically breast cancer, but can be other things as well. We talk about, I mentioned just tumors, I mentioned bulky lymphoma, I mentioned adenocarcinoma, I mentioned metastasis. You can get sarcomas as well. You can get fistulas to the stomach, that's a bit harder to diagnose at times, but fistulas between the colon and the stomach do occur and patients present with halitosis, so it's a very unusual appearance. Um, in terms of stomach, can you always distinguish what's malignant from what's benign? The answer is no. You can have wall thickening and then you say, well, there's wall thickening. If it's bulkier, you tend to favor malignancy, but you can have early infiltration, which can simply be just from um, a cancer, but so sometimes inflammation versus cancer is going to be hard. You're going to need endoscopy with biopsy to be certain. Again, adenopathy, nodes around the stomach, anything above eight millimeters is considered positive. We're very strict, particularly gastropathic nodes and that region. Things that involve the stomach, you look at other organs as well. Obviously, liver metastasis, but if you have lymphoma, it's not uncommon to get liver, spleen, or kidney involvement. But if you have adenocarcinoma, the main spread is omentum, mesentery, and the liver proper. If you get other things, for example, um, like just tumors, they can ulcerate. They're often treated with Gleevec, and so once you get treated, the lesions are more cystic, when they're more solid to begin with. Again, just tumors get large, they can ulcerate, fistulize, present with bleeding, so those are all things you need to consider. Um, Inflammatory versus neoplastic, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you can say the stomach looks abnormal. We can talk about fold thickening, classically Minitriez disease. Classically, I showed a case yesterday of Zollinger-Ellison, but with Zollinger-Ellison, you're typically gonna find a lesion in the region near the head of the pancreas, and it's typically a gastrinoma. So um, you can see multiple organ involvement, pancreas and stomach. Then you're thinking about a Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, particularly when the folds are very thick. Again, in terms of protocols with IV contrast, uh, if I'm doing for a bleed, it's dual phase imaging. If I'm looking for ulcerations, fistulizations, dual phase works very nicely. 
we don't always do dual phase because you know a lot of the ER cases are simply one phase, typically venous. So I, I do want to be careful about radiation dose. But if I really want to stage the stomach really well, I'm going to do dual phase imaging. So that becomes very important. So that's kind of a brief run through on the stomach. Let me see who's here. Uh, Mohammed Ahmad, hello, and uh, Hassan Kabir from Norway. I hope it's nice there this time of year. And Jeffrey uh, Yevlet, I don't know where he's from, but uh, thank you. And uh, Niada, so we have a bunch of people from different places. And again, you know, it's interesting, we've learned over time that most people who will watch this talk will not watch it while I'm giving it because everyone is busy. If you're at Hopkins, you're working through lunch, or you're at a conference or multidisciplinary, or you're busy reading films. Um, but uh, people, what's nice about things like Facebook Live, we put this on YouTube, we have it on Facebook. You can watch it when you want to watch it. So it's like, a, we're like cable, you know, you could demand to see us anytime, any place. And with that, uh, I'll tell you guys I'm working on new lectures, so we're really moving along. Also, by within a couple of days, you'll see our new app on uh, the, from the Apple Store on our case presentation. Over 1,800 cases now with answers, pearls, discussion, lots and lots of cases. But that um, should be coming out from the Apple Store within the next day or two. Sarah's finishing that up. So a lot of cool things. And again, go to the teaching file. You can see lots of things about the stomach. Look at the protocol section, lots of things about the stomach. There's a new protocol section. You could reach it from the front page of CT is Us. Bottom right, you can go there and find it very quickly. So with that, let me say thank you. Have a great day. And I think I'm gonna go to Starbucks. Now I'm not advertising Starbucks. They open the Starbucks here. So what I do is I get the latte. I'm not sure it's worth $5.55, but uh, whatever. Okay, see you later.